Thank you. I had a very rural upbringing, and I went to a very small central Pennsylvania college. When I was 16, I started working in a potato chip factory. So 1982, it was the summer after my first year in college, and I came home and I started working at the potato chip factory. A lot of my friends from that first year in college were encouraging me to go to the beach and live with them at the beach and work down there for the summer. But I returned to my roots. I needed to make money. I needed to put myself through school. However, that summer, we had very little work in the potato chip factory. So I was only working three and a half to four days each week. And I had an open invitation to go visit my friends at the beach. So my friends, or my family, said, I think you should do it. And my parents said, yes, you can take the family car and drive to the beach and visit your friends. I was 19. Our family car was a 1967 three on the tree Chevy 2. <laughs> and we had no cell phones. We had no Google Maps. My parents made sure I went to the AAA and I had my trip tip. Uh, there are those of you here in the audience who, who remember triptych. <laughs> so I set off by myself with enough cash to get me through the weekend, barely, and a full tank of gas. And I promptly got lost around that. I was driving from York, Pennsylvania, rural York County, to Cape May. And I got lost around Route 295, where you pick up the... Delaware Memorial Bridge. Several times I got lost. I stopped, I would ask for directions. I may have gotten good directions, I may have gotten bad directions, I may have uh, misinterpreted the directions, but I got lost several times. Finally, I was over that bridge and I'm driving towards the beach and now I'm feeling really good. The music is blaring and I'm singing. And I'm just driving a straight road with fields all around, and I hear a sound. And my father, who dabbled in car mechanics, taught me a little bit about cars, and the sound was not a good one. <laughs> so I pulled off, and I looked underneath the car, and sure enough, my muffler had come down. I had had previous experience with this in a different model car, where I could pull the muffler off and stick it in the trunk and keep going. <laughs> this was not the case with this one. The manifold was one piece. So here I was in the middle of nowhere with a manifold that was dragging on the ground and no phones in sight, not sure what to do. And it was my first trip driving somewhere by myself. I'm alone, cars whizzing by. Finally, a pickup truck pulls over. There were two gentlemen in it and a woman sit seated between them in, in the truck. The one gentleman proceeded to make a lot of crude comments. And the other one was very kind and said, I have a garage right up the road. And for those of you who know anything about cars, some people really like the 67 Chevy to Nova. And he said that this was his car, that he actually had a hobby of restoring these cars. Where I grew up, garage meant service station. So I was thinking, oh, how lucky. I ran into someone and they could take me to the garage. So I followed them, and I am at their home and the garage and these two men. And I'm very scared. So he said, go in the house with my sister, the woman was his sister, he said, I'll fix your car. And he did, he fixed my car. And I had been on the road for probably six hours at that point. So I'm tired, I'm scared, and then he fixed my car, and I wanted to pay him. But I knew if I paid him, I had no money for the weekend. And he said, no, I don't want you to pay me. I said, you must give me your address, I, I have to send you a thank you on the other side of this but I was still scared and unsure of everything. I took his address and I asked for directions because I need to get back on my road to Cape May. Well, there's a song with that. <laughs> um, and he said, look, I know a shortcut. 
and I, I will lead you out and then you'll be closer to getting down to visit your friends. I took him up on that, but we are now on a really back road and he pulls off and I pull off and he comes out and he's approaching my car door and my fear was building. And I just only partially put down my window and the gentleman produced a flower. <laughs> and he said, he said, I hope you have a good weekend. If you're ever back this way, stop by. I'm not married or nothing. <laughs> so I, I, I got to the beach with my friends and I was eventually able to contact my parents who were worried sick because it was probably 10 hours from the time I left till I actually was able to, to touch base with them. Long story short, that weekend at the beach, I got sand in my shoes and I knew I was not working in that potato chip factory anymore <laughs> after that summer. So the summer of 83, I moved to the beach and I worked there. The summer of 84, I moved to the beach and I worked there. The summer of 85, I moved back and I worked there. That summer, oh, and I, I left off a key point. When I got home after that first trip in 1982, I sent a check to Lorenzo, the gentleman who had fixed my car. And I put my return address on it because I figured if he wasn't going to get my check, I wanted that to come back to me. Fast forward, it's 1985. I'm in the Acme parking lot in Cape May Courthouse, New Jersey, buying a few groceries. I'm coming out and I pass a gentleman and he and I both do a double take and look at each other. And he points at me and he says, Chevy too. <laughs> And I said, Lorenzo. <laughs> he said, I just sent you a card. It's three years. I said, you just sent me a card? I just sent you a card. And I had had all my mail forwarded from my parents' home to my address where I'd be living at the beach. I said, well, I haven't received it. He said, I just sent it. And I said, well, I'll, I'll look for it. We parted ways, and he said, if you ever want to stop by, I'm not married or nothing. <laughs> I got home to my apartment, and in the mailbox was a card. And I opened it up, and it was a thinking of you card. And it was signed, the Chevy 2 Love, <laughs> Lorenzo. So my small wor world story comes back three years later, reinforcing for me the kindness of strangers and putting myself a bit to shame for ever fe feeling fearful and really grateful for a man named Lorenzo who stopped alongside the road that day and make America kind again. Thank you.